guys, today we're going to start to talk about Verilog. This video, we're going to learn the basics about the Verilog hardware description language. We're going to start just by showing the basic data types, the variables, how we create a simple circuit. Just to start, we're going to show a little bit more today about combination of circuits. In following videos, we're going to learn how to create sequential circuits and test benches. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed. Let's go. Okay, guys, let's start talking a little bit more about Verilog. As I said before, Verilog is a hardware description language. It's not a programming language. What this means? You are creating code to implement an algorithm. You are not creating a code that is going to be interpreted by a CPU that will follow your algorithm as a recipe. So basically, you are structuring your algorithm in what to be and not, uh, you are not structuring a CPU on what to do. Okay? So the possible values that you can have in Verilog are 1, 0, x and z. These are the normal bit type of Verilog. Okay? So the bit type can have only those values. Okay? How you create a constant, how you create a value in Verilog? An option is just to put a number. Okay? A number by default will be 32 bit unsigned. You can use this format here that you show the number of bits, the type bit, and you put here, for instance, 001. This is 3 bits with the value 001. Or, for instance, if you want to create an hexadecimal value, you put here, for instance, H for hexadecimal, ABC, and you say here that these have 16 bits. Okay? Uh, the, the very log language is actually a, a huge language that you have features for simulation and synthesis. Okay? The synthesis is a simulation, uh, is a sorry, is a subset of the very log, very log languages. There are constructs that are okay to simulate, but they will not synthesize. And we are going to see this in the in the following videos, the difference in what you can do, what can be synthesized, or, I mean, what can create hardware and what not. Okay? You have two variable types, two signal types in Verilog, the wires and the reg. Okay? The wires are just used to connect modules or intermediate signal between combinational circuits. Okay? It's, as the name says, just a wire. The reg are just variables that are going to be used in always blocks. We're going to see this in, in, in future as well and show the difference be between wire and reg. What, uh, when you use a reg or when you use a wire. Okay? Here, I just show, me, show you how to create a bit vector. Okay? For instance, here we are using a wire and we are going to create an 8 bit bus. So, you say wire, 7 down to 0, and the name of the wire. Okay? Okay, guys. The entry point of every very log code will be a model. A model can be a circuit that you are going to create or a test bench. Okay, let's see the format. You say model, circuit name, okay? Between parentheses you have the ports of your, your, of, your, of your model, okay? The ports can be input, output, or in-out. And, the, uh, okay, sorry guys. The model is start and finish between model and new model, okay? And uh, what you have here inside, in this area here, is where you're going to describe the behavior of your circuit. Okay? Here is the syntax for commands, and uh, here is the syntax for multi-line commands, if you guys need, and uh, blocks of, of code are separated with begin and end, which is a little bit like C, okay? or C or C++. The syntax of Verilog is more or less like it. Okay? Okay, to illustrate this, our first combination of circuit will be the one bit adder. Okay, the one bit adder has three inputs and two outputs. Okay, how can we define this in Verilog? Here we start and end with a model, model and model. Here is our port list. Okay, as we said, we have as inputs A, B, and carry in. Outputs we have C and carry out. Now, take a look at this point here. Here, we're doing a short operation between A and B, okay? And the result of this short operation is given at this point here and at this point here as well, okay? This is a good case where we're going to use a wire. 
So basically, we use the wire to serve as an interconnect signal between uh, one or more combination of parts. Okay. So let's uh, let's now take a look in the behavior part of our circuit. Okay. Uh, in order to understand more, let's try to look in the schematic and in the description code at the same time. Okay. The first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to do a short operation between A and B, and we're going to store these. We're going to pass this to the wire one. Okay. So what we do? Assign to the wire one A short B. In order to get the value of C, okay, what we do? We do a short between W1 and carry in, which is this operation here. Assign C equals W1 short carry in. Now, for, the, for this part here of the circuit, okay, uh, this wire here, W2, W2 is what? Is an end operator between, between W1 and carry in, okay, is here. Here, by the way, is the end operator, which is exactly like in C. Okay? W2, assign W2 equals W1 and carry in. At this point here, we also have the W3, okay? which is an end operator between B and A. Here, assign W3, A and B. Okay? And here, the carry out, we assign carry out equals W2 or W3. Okay, just one point to remember: uh, the input or output ports are also are also implicit wires. Okay, so you can consider them them also as wires. Okay, next part we're going to see how to describe this circuit in a little bit easier way. Now rewrite the same behavior but with less line of code. Okay, here we're going to assign carry out and C with the operation A plus B plus carry in. Okay, A plus B plus carry in is going to return a 2-bit result. Okay, and here we use the concatenation operator. So basically we are, we are saying, here we want the most significant bit, and here is the less significant bit of this operation here. Okay, the concatenation by the way is quite simple. Okay, here we're going to see another circuit. Okay, this guy here is the MOOX. Okay. What the MOOCs does, he's going to select between the input ports A, B, C, or D, depending on what you put here in the selector variable, okay? So, as we see, this circuit has four inputs, sorry, had four inputs here, one selector, which is also one input with two bits, and one, out, uh, one output variable called out with one bit, okay? So, how we define this? Here, in the model, we have input A, B, C, and D. We also have the input with two bits called cell, and we have the output out, okay? And how we define the behavior of this circuit here? We say assign out equals A if cell is zero, B if cell is one, C if cell is two, or, or D if cell is three. Here is a very important part that you always need to remember when you create combination of circuit, is to have this otherwise. Imagine that here, cell has a different value from 0 to 3, have a, for instance, Z, okay? In this case, if we don't put nothing that we're going to say what to do if this, uh, if this condition happens, by default, Verilog is going to create a flip-flop or a latch to hold the previous value, okay? So, Important thing to remember, always that you are creating a combination of circuit, you always need to, to cope with all the possibilities that a variable can assume. Another way to describe our multiplexer is to use the combination of always. Okay? This is quite important because sometimes, for instance, imagine that the variable select here have like way more, uh, way more use cases. Okay? So, in this case, maybe it's better that we use our, uh, our kind of programmatic way that uh, it allows you to have, for instance, if, case, and structure that are, the structures that are more uh, easily understandable, okay? So, what do we need to do? In order to create a combination of always, we use always, at, and the asterisk here. This is the most important stuff because it's going to, to put all variables needed 
in the in the behavior block to execute the always block. This is called a sensitive, sensitivity list. Okay. For instance, here uh, we use as the input the our variable selector, and uh, you don't need to put here select a, b, c, or and d. So we put asterisk, and the, and then the synthesizer will take care to put all the input variables of our combination of secret inside the sensitivity list. Okay, so in this case, basically the same thing. We say case cell if zero a, if one b, if two c, if three d. Okay, and here we put a default case. We say that if cell does not have any of these values here, we're going to out. We're going to say that output receive don't care, which is the x value. Okay, uh, just another point to mention is that when you use a always block. You always need to output the value to a red type variable. Okay, here we we also redefine out as red as well. Okay, red does not mean register. It just means that is a variable that is going to be controlled by a always block. So before we continue to the lab, uh, I'm going to just show just one more detail, which is the use of parameters. Uh, which are uh, another accessory in Verilog that allows you to create generic circuits that will, is going to work with a lot of sizes. I mean, there will be no port with a fixed size. It allows you to parameterize our circuit to have any size. Okay? And uh, then I'm going to show what we need to do in the lab. Our lab is going to be analog. And uh, I'm going to switch to the border on only to show you guys how it's going to be. Okay, let's go. Uh, this lab we are going to do analog, which is the one of the basic uh, basic circuit in a processor. And uh, this is a combination of circuit, okay, which have two inputs for the operands, one input to switch to choose which operation to do, and the output, okay. Uh, before we're going to, we're going to jump to that, I'm going to show you the parameter, okay? Uh, if you use this structure here, okay, if you put a name to a parameter, you can use this parameter inside the definition of your, of your bit vectors, okay? And this is useful, why? Because uh, later, on, we, later on, we're going to learn how to instantiate this value. And when we instantiate, we can change its parameter value. In, in order to synthesize different sizes. Okay, uh, just a quick reminder, in this lab, the operations that we are going to implement are sum, subtract, multiplication, and, or, short, shift left by one and shift right by one. Okay, uh, we are not going to put here the division because the division is not synthesizable in, uh, in normal FPGAs. But I'm going to show in the future how to implement the division. Okay guys, so let's switch to the lab and uh, thanks for watching. Okay guys, we are here just starting by opening Vivado and creating the project of the lab tree. Uh, we are going to choose the, still the Z board to implement this circuit. After we create our file of our model, the Vivado creates you a wizard and sh sorry, it shows up to you a wizard where you can choose the ports and add some names. This is helpful because it's going to create the basic structure of a model in Verilog. Okay, now we are just editing a little bit the model, and uh, as I as I shown in the previous in the previous lecture, we are going to use a parameter to control the size of the of our input and output ports. Uh, just one detail to remember is that uh, we're going to use the parameters mi minus one because you uh, we actually include the zeros in the in the bit vector size. Okay. Uh, by the way. Uh, we are going to use the always combinational block. So uh, we put asterisks in the sensitivity list to automatically include all the inputs needed. 
and uh, I'm going to show uh, you know, on your right all the operations that we need to to implement. Okay, as you are using an always block, means that you have uh, we can use a case, and uh, we're going to write this right away now. Uh, by the way, uh, the always block always need to output put uh, into a reg variable, so uh, that's why we are using the the reg in the output port C. Okay, we are just open and finishing the case, and uh, there are the operations: sum, subtraction, multiplication, and or short shift left shift left by one, and shift right by one. By the way, guys, uh, I'm not talking about this now, but uh, when you when you're going to do sequential always block, we're going to use another assign operator. Now we are using the equal, which is the blocking operator. But uh, in the future, we're going to see the non-blocking assignment as well in the always block, and uh, I'm going to show the difference when you need to use one or the other. And it's okay. Now we're just putting the the operator values in the case, and we are going to synthesize in the code, and we are going to check if the synthesized code create any schematic that is more or less what you want to describe. Again, very log. It's not about programming. It's about uh, describing a hardware. So you always need to have this in mind. Well, that's it guys, the schematic run, seems fine, all the operations that we created are there, and uh, okay, next video we are going to talk a little bit more about test benches, and uh, hope you guys like it, if you have any comments or you want to learn a little bit more about one thing, just let me know, and I uh, hope you guys enjoy the video, uh, see you soon.